Greetings, M squared here today. We're going to talk about graphing quadratic equations when um, A is not 1 and by using a pattern. So if you remember correctly, these are just some points in an x squared, right? Just a, the parent function of the quadratic function. So remember, we have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's standard form. Or in vertex form, we have ax minus h plus k. That's vertex form. But the parent function that they all come off of is that x squared. So if I want to graph, I'm going to graph just the parent function, and then I'm going to show you some patterns so that you don't have to make a list of points each time if you remember these patterns. So here we go with x squared. So this is our list, right? If we, ha if we put a negative 3 in for x, we get 9, because negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3. Same thing here. Now I want you to notice the pattern. So first of all, I'm going to graph it. I'll graph this one, and then I'll help have you notice the pattern. So if I graph these points right here, sorry about that, um, I get 0, 0. I get negative 3, neg um, negative 3, 9. Negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, and then I know it's symmetrical, so I can just follow that on the other side of the axis of symmetry, which is x equals 0 here. I get my beautiful little x squared. Okay, that is the graph of x squared. Now notice the pattern. From the vertex, I went over 1 and up 1 to the right, and over 1 and up 1 to the left. From that point, I went over 1 and up 3 over 1 and up 3. And then from this point, over 1, up 5, over 1, up 5. You can see it here too. I'm going to draw it really right here. This distance is 5. This distance is 3. This distance is 1. These distances are all 1. So on my x, I'm moving up 1 each time. And you'll see here, I'm moving that. This is where my vertex is. So I'm going 1, over 1, up 1, both sides. Over another 1, up 3 more. Over 1, up 5 more. So watch what happens when I change that. So we're going to now look at what if there was a 2, what if a was 2? What if we had a 2x squared? What would that look like? All right, let's see. Well, I would have to take 3 and square it, which is 9, and then I'd have to multiply it by 2. So line that up. That would be an 18. Then I would have to take negative 2 and square it, which would be 4. And then I'd have to double it, which would be 8. Then I'd have to take 1 and square it, which would be 1, and double it, and that would be 2. And then 0, it just gets me 0, because 0 squared times 2. 1 squared times 2, 2 squared times 2, 3 squared times 2. Symmetric, so I can see that. OK, what's the pattern here? What's this distance? And this distance. OK, we'll start here. This is 2. This is 6. And this is 10. How do these, sorry, did I I'll forget one there? How do these compare with the 1, 3, 5 of the x squared? Well, you see the 2, 6, 10. Can you see that they're doubled? OK, well, why are they doubled? Because there's a 2 right there. OK, well, what would happen if it was a 3x squared? Well, let's try it. So 3x squared. So if I have 3x squared, I take 3, square it, which is 9, times it by 3, which is 27. Then that'd be 4 times 3, which is 12. And it would be 1 times 3, which is 3. And then 0, of course, 0 times 3. And because of the axis of symmetry, I know it goes the same this way. OK, what's the pattern? Let's see. What's the pattern here? Up 3, then up 9, then up 15. How does that compare with the 1, 3, 5? Well, 1 times 3, 3 times 3, 5 times 3. So if you know that your a is 2 or 3, and you remember this 1, 3, 5 pattern, then you know what you need to do for these. So for example, I'm going to move this for a little bit. And I'm going to now graph, what about if it was f of x equals 2x squared? Well, let me graph that. 
sorry, I was supposed to graph that in pink. <laughs> I'm trying to stay color coordinated. Okay, 2x squared. So that means instead of going over 1 and up 1, now I go over 1, up 2. And instead of going from that up 3, I actually have to go up 6 because I go up twice as many. So I went up 3 last time. Now I'm going to go up 6 this time. And then if I use my axis of symmetry, you can see that it's vertically stretched. Right? It's a little bit skinnier than the other one. Okay, now we're going to do 3x squared, f of 3x squared. So that means instead of going over 1 and up 1, we go over 1 up 3. And then remember from our little pattern, we would go up 9. Now that's kind of off my grid, right? Because that's 3, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wait, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Looks like it would have been right up there. So I'll just kind of pretend. Okay. And you can see that's even more vertically stretched than the first one. So without actually plugging in a bunch of numbers, I just remembered my pattern. Now let's go to, back to our pattern because I want to talk to you about well, what happens if it's what happens if it's one half? Then what do you do? Well, can you think about the pattern and what might happen? Let's try it. So what would I have to do? I'd have to take negative 3, I'd have to square it, which is 9, and then I'd have to take half of 9, which is 4.5. Then I'd have to take negative 2 and square it, which is 4, take half of that, which is 2. 1 squared, that'd be 0.5. 0 squared times a half is 0, and then I know because of my axis of symmetry, I'm just going to have that same pattern going the other way. Well, what is our pattern? This is 0 0.5. What did we have an A of? 0 0.5. When this one was 3, we had a 3. When this one was 2, we had a 2. If you start recognizing that pattern, it's going to really help you. So what do we get here? That's a distance of 1.5. Yes, that is half of 3. What's this distance? 2.5. And yes, that is half of 5. So if you just remember this 1, 3, 5, you're going to be able to take A and multiply it by those 1, 3, and 5. And you'll know how many to go up after you go over 1. OK, with that in mind, let's graph some. And then we're going to write some equations. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how to look at the pattern and see what the equation is. OK, this is 2x squared. Oh, we already did that one. Let's try the negative 1 half. So what's the vertex? The vertex is 0, 0. What's the axis of symmetry? x equals 0. Does it open up or down? It opens down. OK, so we know the vertex is at 0, 0. And because it's a 1 half, because a is 1 half, we know that instead of going over 1 and down 1, we're going to go over 1 and down a half on both sides. And then remember our pattern with the 1 half. It was, the pattern is, for the regular one, is 1, 3, 5. So it's going to be half of all of those. So I'm going to go over one more, and then I'm going to go down 1.5 on both sides. And then I'm going to go over one more and down 2.5. 2.5. And that is going to be connected with dots, and I'm done. OK, let's try this one. What's the vertex? Now, I'm assuming that you know how to find the vertex, that you've already done vertex edge form. If not, you've got to go watch the other video. What's the axis of symmetry? x equals negative 4. Does it open up or down? Down, because a is negative 2. So I have my 1, 3, 5. And now it's going to be doubled, because a is negative 2. It's going to open down. So first, I'm going to go to my vertex. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And then I know that instead of going over 1 and down 1, because it's a is 2, it's over 1 and down 2. And then it would have been over 1 and down 6. That's off my grid, so I don't have to do any more. But you could if you had a bigger piece of graph paper. OK? And then we're going to do this one. 1 half um, is our a, so we know it's vertically compressed. Our Vertex is 2, 3. Remember, it's always the opposite of what you see in parentheses. And then if this is on the right side, it's just whatever that is. So our axis of symmetry is 2. So I'm going to go to my vertex. I know I'm opening up because A was positive. And so instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going over 1, up a half. And then instead of going over 1 and up 3, I do half of that. So 1 and a half. And then instead of going over 1 and up 5, I go over 1 and up 2 and a half. And I connect my stuff. So once, that's why math, math is so full of patterns. And once you have the pattern, 
you're just going to be golden. Okay, I'm not going to do three because I think we've figured out the pattern, but I want to show you how to write an equation then if you know, if you recognize that. Now, if it's something strange, because A doesn't have to be one, two, or three, or a half. It could be 5.7. So that's different. We're not going to do that. We're just doing like just normal integers so that um, it can help us. So if it's anything different, you're going to have to use a little bit more algebra for that. That's algebra two, but we're in algebra one. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to write the equation to this parabola. The first thing I want to know is what's A and what's the vertex? So the vertex looks like it's negative one down two. So negative one, negative two. Well, that helps me find part of my equation, right? Because I know that it goes A and then it is, has a parentheses with a squared and then it's a plus K. Um, well, our K is negative two. And since that's negative one, we do X plus one. Remember, it's always the opposite. Now I've got to find my A. So I just look for my pattern. If you went over one, how many did you go down before you hit that next little guy? Two. That tells me A is two. But it's upside down, so my A is negative two. So now I've just graphed that equation. And if you want to see if a point works, like that point right there is zero, negative three. Put a zero in for X and see if you get a negative three out for Y. Let's try it. One squared is one times negative two is four. I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. I was like, that's not working. That's four. Let's try that again. <laughs> Um, that's a negative four. Um, so zero, one squared is one times negative two is negative two minus two is negative four. Now it works. <laughs> Got to read my graph better. Okay, uh, let's see. Look at this one. So I need to find my vertex and my a. That, those are the two things I need to write my equation. So my vertex looks like it's negative three, negative three. And A, let's look, over one, up one, two, three. Looks like three. So that means my A is three. It opens up, so I know it's positive. So now I, Y equals three, X plus three. It's always the opposite of that, squared minus three. Um, so that's the three. Let's do another one. I can't remember what I was gonna say. I was gonna say something a minute ago. Oh, I know what I was gonna say, the Y or the f of x. So when we're talking about functions, we're using this function notation. Remember, f of x is just telling you, f tells you the function name, x tells you which variable you're using. So when we use function notation, we use that. But you can also use y. I'm not picky, sometimes your teacher might be, so use whichever one, but they're interchangeable. Just y, is, y dressed up as f of x. Okay, what's the vertex? Vertex is, let's see, negative four and then four. And what's A? Well, if I go, um, this is counting, this is one now. So I went over one, it looks like up a half. Well, if I went over one and up a half, then my A is one half, it opens up. So I have Y equals one half times X plus four squared plus four. Okay, let's look at this one. Over one, down two. A is negative two. My vertex is two, negative three. So my equation is f of x equals negative two times x minus two squared minus three. This is all the information, oops, all the information I need right there, a and that. So this is just makes it a lot easier if you notice these patterns, so much easier. Okay, vertex, a. My vertex is negative four, negative four. And a is over one, up two, so. We'll do y this time. y equals, oh sorry, I, it's two, opens up. Two times x plus four squared minus four. Alrighty, this one, a is over one down a half. That means it's negative one half. And my vertex is negative two, three. So we get f of x equals negative one half times x plus two squared plus three. Okay, I hope that helped. Good luck um, writing those equations and graphing using patterns, m squared sign and out.